The parabola with equation y is equal to 25 minus x squared intersects the x-axis at points a and b as shown. Determine the length of a, b. As long as we find the x-intercepts, we should be good to go. Find the x-intercept, you set y equal to 0, 25 minus x squared. Solve for that, you get x squared is equal to 25. x is therefore equal to plus or minus 5. So this guy over here, b, looks like 5, and this is minus 5. So the distance from minus 5 to 5 is 10. So that would be the answer to part A. Rectangle ABCD is formed as shown with C and D below the x-axis and BD equal to 26. Determine the length of BC. Well, B to D is 26. Okay, so um, let me draw a little line there. So that guy is 26. Okay, so uh, I guess this is just Pythagoras, right? Yeah, so BD squared is equal to DC squared plus BC squared. BD they gave me is 26. And then DC is going to be 10 because it's the same as AB because it's a rectangle, right? Yeah, there you go. And then therefore you just got to solve for BC. And I'm sure you could do this math and when you do BC is 24. So... I think that's it. Yeah, that's all they wanted us to figure out there. Part C. If CD is extended to both directions and meets the parabola at E and F, determine the length of EF. So basically what they're saying is you got to extend this guy. So let's see here, like this. And then it touches, of course, we'll call this one E and we'll call this guy F. Okay, so what am I going to do here? I guess what we're trying to figure out is the coordinates, right? But the y coordinate I already know because it's the top to bottom distance from b to c, which I just figured out was 24. Yeah, but be careful because it's minus 24, right? Because it's below the x axis. So we already know that this is minus 24, and that's minus 24, the y coordinate. So then I just have to figure out the x coordinate. Okay? So that's my equation. So if y is minus 24, plug that in. And then therefore x squared will be 49. Then x looks like plus or minus 7. So this will be the 7, and this will be the minus 7. And the distance from minus 7 to plus 7 will be 14. So 14 is the distance from e to f. First, determine two positive integers x and y with 2x plus 11y over 3x plus 4y equal to 1. Now let u and v be two positive rational numbers with u less than v. If we write u and v as fractions where u is a over b and v is c over d, not necessarily in lowest terms with a, b, c, and d positive integers, then the fraction a plus c over b plus d is called a median of u and v. Since u and v can be written in many different forms, there are many different medians of u and v. In A, you showed that 1 is the median of 2 over 3 and 11 over 4. Also, 2 is a median of 2 over 3 and 11 over 4 because 2 over 3 is 6 over 9 and 11 over 4 is 44 over 16 and 6 plus 44 over 9 plus 16 is 2. Are they asking me to do something in A? In A, you showed that 1... Okay, I, is that a question or something? Uh, well, let, let me just figure this out here. In A, oh no, it's up here. First, determine two positive. Ah, okay, okay. I, this is the question up here. All right. Okay, so let me just do the math here. 2x plus 11y is equal to 3x plus 4y. And therefore, x is equal to 7y. And I guess any integers would would be okay because they're just saying determine two so I let x equal one and if x equals one then y would equal seven right I mean I'm, there's many many others but an infinite number but this is just one and then uh, this part I have to show this I don't think I have to but I'd like to show it why one is the median the key here is this guy or this line right here not necessarily in lowest terms so you have to kind of find a, a multiple, I guess, um, that would work. So keeping this equation in mind, let me see here. 
The median is one. Okay. So I the seven. Ah, okay, I got it. So this finding is helpful because if I multiply top and bottom by seven to the two over three, I will get fourteen over twenty-one, and that with eleven over four will give a median of one. Because if you look at that, it'll be 14 plus 11 over 21 plus 4. And that is 25 over 25. Yeah. And that, of course, is 1. Okay. So I'm not entirely sure what they wanted me to do there, but I just showed you how the, the fact that, that 2 over 3 and 11 over 4 can have a median of 1. All right. Let's move right along. Part B, prove that the average of u and v, namely u plus b, v over 2, is the median of u and v. Okay. So u plus v over 2, uh, and keeping in mind that u is equal to a over b, and v is equal to c over d. So that would be basically a over b plus c over d. And then all divided by 2. So you can just put a half out front like that. Okay. So then, of course, I'm going to add this fraction, getting a common denominator. So AD plus BC will be o over BD, I believe. And then I just combine it. AD plus BC will over 2BC. And this is representing the average of U and V, of U and V. Okay, so far so good. Now we have to figure out the median. So u is equal to a over b, and it's also equal to any sort of, um, I don't know if multiple is the best word, because multiple implies that you're only multiplying the numerator. But anything that's not in lowest terms, I guess. Uh, so that's why I put those x's there. And then similarly, v is equal to c over d, and it could also be any kind of uh, f equivalent fraction that's not in lowest terms. That's the best way of saying it. Okay, but I think if, if I let x equal d, then this guy right here would become ad over bd, and that's going to help me. I'm trying to make it look like that because eventually I have to make it equal. And on this guy over here, if I make y equal to b, yeah, I'm going to get v equal to c, b over d, b, like that. And then now, if I combine them and try to get the average, I will get, uh, or no, 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 uh, I'm going to get the, uh, uh, not the average, sorry about that, uh, the median, right? Yeah, the median. So not the average. Median is what I'm trying to get. And the median, I'm going to get with this formula right here. This, this formula right here. So it, add the tops and add the bottoms. And if I add the top, I get AD plus C, BC. And then when I add the bottoms, I just get two of those BDs. And there you go. I just showed that this average is the same as the median. And that's, I think, what they wanted. Prove that the average is a median. So there you go. I just showed it. And in particular, that's true when uh, u is equal to ad over bd and when v is equal to uh, cb over bd db now the there's a very key word here prove that the average of u and v namely u plus v over 2 is a median it's not the only median but it's a median one possible uh, median and it occurs specifically when we let x equal to d and y equal to b so Prove that every median m of u and v satisfies u is less than m and m is less than v. Well, starting with this guy right there, we initially 
know that u is less than v. So we have to then kind of put the m in there and therefore satisfy that inequality. Okay. Well, u is equal to a, some a over b because it's a rational number, and v is equal to some c over d for the same reason. And therefore, the median, if we use the median formula, would be just a plus c plus b over b plus d, like that. And therefore, since u is less than v, that means a over b is less than c over d. And then if you cross multiply, you get ad is less than bc. AD is less than BC. And this is a very important point that we will use later in the question. Okay, so now we have to we have to prove this guy right here. Right there. That has to be proven. Okay. So let's start with one and then we'll do the other one. So first we'll try to prove that M is greater than U. So and then we'll try to prove that m is less than v so let's get a let's get a sort of a relationship between m and u if m is indeed greater than u then m minus u must be a positive number right so let's see if we come up with that let's see if we can show that this is greater than zero okay so m minus u what is it actually well that's m so we have a plus c over b plus d and then u is this guy right over there. That's a over b, right? Okay. All right, so we got to do this math here, unfortunately. So we're going to have b times a plus c, and then a times b plus d. And then that's going to be over b, the common denominator, b plus d times b. Okay, expand all this stuff. a, b plus b c minus a b minus a d all over uh, b times b plus d and then I think the a b's cancel so I get b c minus a d over this guy b plus d times b now I remember I said that that's important because if b c is greater than a d then b c minus a d would be greater than zero right so there we go we just proved that uh, this was equal to m minus u so we just proved that m minus u is greater than zero and therefore m is greater than u so we got the first part of that inequality i'll just put it over here that m is greater than u okay so if we can get the second part then we're done we're done so let's see if we can get the second part second part should be very very similar and that our goal is to prove that v is greater than m right so we're going to compare v and m if v is indeed greater than m then v minus m would be greater than zero is that right yeah okay so let's see if we can do that v is what c over d m is a plus c over b plus d and the same kind of story you know we have to do this algebra here b plus d minus d times a plus c all over d times b plus d and then we got b c plus c d minus a d minus c d all over d times b plus d like that and then this just combines into bc minus ad over d plus b plus d and for the same reason as before i believe this is greater than zero so therefore that means that uh, v minus m is greater than zero and therefore v is greater than m so that completes the puzzle so I can put that here, V is greater than M. And there you go, that's the inequality that they want us to show. Suppose that N is greater than or equal to 3, a sequence A1, A2, A3, dot, 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 AN of N integers, the first M of which are equal to negative 1, and the remaining P, which is equal to N minus M, of which are equal to 1, is called a MP sequence. 
The sequence negative 1, negative 1, 1, 1, 1 is an MP sequence, A1 through A5 with M equal 2 and P equal 3. Consider all the possible products AI times AJ times AK with I less than J less than K. That can be calculated using the terms from the sequence to determine how many of these products are equal to 1. So we have uh, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 1, and 1. So this is A1, this is A2, and so on, A3, A4, A5. And then they want this product, uh, some AI times some AJ times some AK. So we have to make a little table and see what we can figure out. Yeah. And then... Um, yeah, for each of these, I will figure out what is A, I, A, J, and A, K, and then, of course, the product A, I times A, J times A, K. Yeah. Okay, so let's do this carefully. Hopefully, we will get this right. Okay, so this inequality has to be satisfied. So I'm uh, fortunately limited to what I can choose. Now, the largest K, I think, is... Well, actually, let me start with the smallest K. Three, because then two and one are the only possibilities. So this is going to be negative 1, negative 1, and 1, and then the product is 1. So there you go. I just did one of those guys. Now let's move up to 4 for k, and then we're going to have a few possibilities. You can have 3 and 2, or you can have 4, 3, and 1, or you can have 4, 2, and 1. And those ones will give the following for AJ, a, I, J, a, J, and AK. Uh, let's see here. Negative 1, 1, 1. Uh, negative 1, 1, 1. And negative 1, negative 1, and 1. So the products would be negative 1, negative 1, and 1. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Now the next one I think is going to be 5. So for 5, I'll fill in my possibilities. 5, 4, 3, 5, 4, 2, and 5, 4, 1. And then 5, uh, 3, 2, and then 5, 3, 1, and then 5, 2, 1, like that. All right, and then let's fill up the A's. Okay, so let's see here. This is going to be 1, 1, 1, so that's 1. Negative 1, 1, 1, negative 1, and so on. I don't, you don't need me to talk you through it. Let me just fill all this stuff in. Uh, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 1, and then finally, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 1. Okay, so now what we have to do is figure out how many of these actually uh, equal just 1. So we have this guy, this guy, that one. And that one. So four of those, I think there was a total of 10, four of those products equal to one.